Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. Today on the workbench I'm going to be starting my ground up build of Evolution Miniatures US Special Operations Operator in Afghanistan 2001-2003. As you can see there's a lot of really fantastic detail on this guy. The casting that the folks at Evolution Miniatures did on this fella especially is just fantastic. The detail is so sharp which is going to make this today's part really simple. Today I'm going to be working on the cleanup and the priming of the figure. And I always start a figure project, any figure, even injection molded or metal figures, even the really high-end stuff. You should always take a look at the figure for mold lines. Now, I highly recommend that you start by looking at the outside of the leg and the inside of the leg. Now, today, I'm only going to be focusing on the one mold line that I've found, which is right here. It's hard to see because it's so minor, but as you can see here, there's a slight lip that shouldn't exist on, you know, a normal pant leg. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take about that point in the knife blade, and I'm going to... gently scrape up like that. You don't want to carve away at the figure. You just want to scrape away the mold line. As you can see on the boot here. And then I use the back of the blade to clear away the garbage that you knock off. Now the reason why I don't use the tip of the blade is because the tip is the point on a knife when you grind it across the surface that point will vibrate and chitter which can leave a scar on the resin which you definitely don't want because then you have to clean that up. For all resin figures you're usually going to have something like this. This is a casting block and this is just a natural bit of excess resin that the manufacturer has that's waste when the figure comes out of the mold. So to clear these away what I recommend that you do is take a knife blade and just very gradually, very gently undermine the casting block like that. So we've already made a whole lot of progress. If you've got something like a diamond saw or just any sort of styrofoam saw or those really thin saws that you can use, I highly recommend you use that. Once you've cleared away the casting block off the bottom of the feet, you'll probably end up with a little bit of spare resin on there. So what I do is I take the figure Place him on a sheet of moderately fine grain sandpaper and then just gently drag him across the flat surface. Until he stands up on his own. There. Perfect. The next step is drilling the hole in the bottom of the foot. Uh, it should be noted that you shouldn't drill here or you'll most likely go through his toes. So just drill at the back of the heel right here. Once you've got a sizable hole that's deep enough, you want to take your brass rod and glue it in. This will allow you not only to pin the figure securely to a base, but it also gives you a great way to hold onto the figure without actually touching the areas that you're painting while you're painting them.
Parts such as the head and the weapon are going to be left on their casting blocks because it'll give me something to hold on to. What I will do, though, is take off the smaller portions of resin, such as this. Just use the tip of your blade, gently clear it away, just like clearing away a mold line. That will give you something to hold on to while you're working on the face, especially since faces, you know, they're probably, for me anyway, they're the hardest part of the figure because they require so much personality. So, here is the assembled figure. As you can see, went together really well. The arms were just paired on a single casting block. It was just a matter of snapping them off and then clearing away whatever was left of the casting block with the flat of the knife blade as I showed you earlier. The pistol grip, they give you an M9 pistol in a holster and the pistol in the holster on the fella's rig is a Glock. And I know that if you're a gun nut, that's gonna bother you, but you can't see it once the M4 goes over top of it. So, you know, just deal with it. I All I did was I carved away the bit of the grip that I could use and then attach it with a bit of super glue. The reason they did this is uh, it allows you to have a little bit of extra sharpness. When you look down, you can see that there's an actual gap between the pistol grip and the load bearing vest. Looking pretty good so far, I think. So now we are going to go on to the priming. And for this, I have been using, and I probably will continue to use, Vallejo color surface primer. I use gray. I would recommend that if you're doing a lot of resin, most resin comes in gray. So I would recommend you take something not gray, like a green or maybe a, a yellow or something like that. Just something so that you can actually see the difference in the colors when you are done priming. You'll be able to see if you missed any spots a lot easier. With this, I oftentimes have to hunt for spots that I missed. And I use this with my Iwata spray gun. Now that the priming's all done, he's all ready to start the painting, which will be in our next episode. So be sure to tune in next Wednesday to see the color blocking and basic details that I'll be putting onto this figure. This figure and many more are available at highcaliberminiatures.com. I'll put the link in the description below. As always, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time.